Amen. I'm trying to get started. I never learned, and that'd be very useful. They make these uh, all stilts, I guess. You walk on sheep rockers wear them. Strap them to your knee. I just, just never, never could get it, Leon. I put them on. I might make it to that wall. Y'all come take these off. <laughs> Cause I knew, cause when you when you know when you're up here that much higher and you fall, that could be bad. You can break off your wrist pretty quick. And uh, anyway, I had I had borrowed them, thinking, well, I may try that try that again. And I was sitting there at the house we live in now, and my young son Chase comes walking in. He puts them on. I said, you better be careful, boy. Ah, and he puts them on, and walks across the room, never had them on his life. I had some makeshift steps made out of blocks. He goes down the steps, he's out in the yard walking around. And I'm just like, wow. <coughs> but we got to learn. Had I continued, I'm sure I could have learned. Because people do it all, you know, people use them all the time. It's not, but many times when we're challenged, this is not comfortable, this is not natural, you know. And, uh, it's the same way with God. <laughs> we got to challenge ourselves to learn to walk with God. And when you got something in the way, you don't need that. I'm here to tell you, if there's something in your life that is standing between you and a covenant relationship with God, I say get rid of it. Y'all with me? Turn, if you would, to 1 John. 1 John. Powerful little book of the Bible. But, uh, boy, if the church, anything that would help the church, it'd be to walk in the light. Hmm? It would be to walk in the light. There's no good in darkness. We have to renew our mind, brother. You know what? I was looking that up when I came up here. And, I, and, and, and that, that's not a coincidence. Y'all with me? Can I read it to you? Y'all think this is what, that's what I'm open to. That's not even nothing to do with today. But I'm not going any further because I'm smart enough to know there is a God in heaven. Can we read that though? Turn, Romans 12. I know y'all was turning, but here we go. Romans 12, verse 1. Apostle Paul. I'm going to have a verse before that. I beseech you, therefore, brethren. This is a this is a urging. This is this is a seriousness. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Huh? It's, a, it's the least we can do what he's done for us. This the least we can do. He's saying, present yourself as a living sacrifice. Well, how are we going to do that? Let's read on. And be not conformed to this world. Be not conformed to this world. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. I tried to skip back this morning, and, and, and the Lord just used Brother Leon. Now, of all the verses in the Bible, here I am open to that. I thought, ah. And anyway. And I know it's hard to get on board with that if you didn't experience it, but I just experienced it. And, uh, but we're, we're not to be conformed to this world any longer. I just said something about how blessed this man walks not. There, there's stuff coming at us that tries to get us to take the shape of this world. And, and uh, I, I used to build all the time. And, and I literally, I, I just hate to go in a store and pick out lumber. I have that. I no longer have fun doing that. You you look at, uh, you know, you need ten boards. I, you're probably going if you want them right. You're going to probably sit there and look at twice that to get what you need. Maybe more than that. That's right. And once you get them on your cart, and you get up there and you pay for them, and you're like, this is good stuff. Now, we, we eyeball this. This is some good, straight, no bar. It's, it's looking good. But uh, you better hurry up and go use that. 
You, you better not go home and say, well, I'm on a little truck now. I think we'll do that next Saturday. This is Saturday. And you just sling them out there on the ground. I see people do this all the time. And it's just like, oh boy, it, it, it just rubs me. But anyway, I promise you next Saturday, what you picked out and thought was, will be junk. Because it will get wet from the dew. It don't have to rain. It'll get wet from the dew. If, if, if there was a dip in the ground, that's exactly what shape them boys is going to be in. And if you throw them there loose and they're laid up on each other, and you know, uh, it, they'll not be worth using. How come? Because they'll be conformed to what's going on around them. And you can be gloriously saved. You can be gloriously set free, uh, delivered from all kinds of bondage and this, that, and the other. But it matters what you hang around with. I'm here to tell you. And you know what? Uh, Oh, help me, Jesus. We may not preach that today. But here it is. What's this today? The big, uh, uh, what they call us, Halloween. Halloween. And, and I grew up, and they would turn the church house into a haunted house. And there's people today. But I'm going to tell you, this is not, a, uh, this is not a, a God, Jesus holiday. And you can do what you want with your kids. But I, I'm telling you, you look at the one right now. We did not celebrate Halloween. Uh, and, and there's people. I'm not coming down on everybody. You can do what you want tonight. You want to dress up like a, a Freddy Cougar? Was that his name, Freddy Cougar? <laughs> he jump out and get you? Uh, I went and seen that when it first came out. And no, she wasn't my wife then. That's about a long time ago. But she jumped out and going to scare me, and I just about got her. I thought, don't do that. People scared. But if you want to dress up like that, and you want to go out and, and, and you know, whatever the case may be, there is nothing good about that. God has not given us the spirit of fear. And whenever you watch something, you say, oh, that was quite entertaining. And then you're too scared to walk out and get something out of your vehicle because it's dark outside. That is fear. God's not given us the spirit of fear. And we're not to lift up something that's anti-life. Are y'all with me? But you know people come against us? Y'all ever been to Hobby Lobby? I think we sit on this Halloween stuff. Hmm. Kind of like Chick-fil-A. You won't go eat no chicken today. Huh? They're doing just fine. Hobby Lobby doing just fine. I wish more of the church would just fall in love with Jesus Christ and quit trying to conform to this world. Amen. And you can't have an aha moment. Oh, help me. I'm trying to be nice. You can't come to yourself till you've heard the truth. But then we can all, not, not ever song Hank Williams wrote was worldly. Because he wrote one. I saw all that. And I believe, it, I believe there was something to that. Yeah. Praise the Lord. I saw the light. And there's many that say, I just don't get it. There's nothing wrong with that. Well, you know what? You're not going to get it. There's a certain place you're going to have to be before you get it. But I'm here to tell you, I got it. And I have understanding. And, and a devilish, ghoulish death holiday is not something that we need to be promoting within the church. I'm the I'm I'm one up here preaching. I'm going to preach it. Yeah, Amen. Amen. Be not until you're not going to transform your mind. Listen, that's what we got to do. Uh, it was it was talked to me like this a long time ago. You come and, and you get saved, but you still got some stinking thinking, huh? Yeah. Hey, this is how Daddy did. Well, Daddy, Daddy may not have been all Bible. This is how Mama did. It. That, may, that don't make it right. There's people who are taught things generation after generation after generation and they just say, you know, what family tradition, however you want to label it, but it may not be Bible. And he did say, come out and be separate. Until we get a desire to no longer be conformed to the world, there's no transforming going to take place. You got you got to have a desire. You got to want something. 
You got to thirst and hunger after righteousness before you're ever going to be filled. This isn't just going to fall on you. This isn't just going to happen to you. You, you. you fall under conviction. That don't make you saved. You got to put the brakes on. You got to find you a place of prayer. And you got to call upon the name of the Jesus before you're ever born again. But then we start this process of we got to renew our mind. Matters who you're around. I said it matters who you're around. Oh, I've shared this illustration over and over and over, but the last thing you want to do is, is get this little started with the beagle puppy who's just got figuring out what life's about. And he, he'll open on trail. Uh, you got him started. He, he'll, he'll try to move the track forward. The last thing you want to do is throw him down with some grown dogs that's rougher than a cob, that's crazy and, and flopping like a fire hose. You see, they do not need that kind of training. You want to put them down with something that stays close to the trail, that's really not all that fast, that's going to give them a good education in how to properly run a rabbit. Or you can ruin a young dog. And there's many people that have had an experience with God and they go right back, just like it says, the dog will go back to their vomit, the, the hog will go back to, you know what I'm talking about. And if you, if you just turn around and go right back in your same predicament, I'm here to tell you, it's probably going to be short-lived. I learned that lesson the hard way. And I'm sure most of us have. But when you get that desire, I want to do it God's way. I want, my, I want my mind renewed. I want to reprogram. I want to get rid of this crazy thinking. And you begin to feed on the Word of God. Huh? I'm telling you, that's when you see your life change. Are y'all still with me? We got to walk in the light, church. We got to walk in the light. I didn't do that to be mean to my children, but I, I pretty much told them, you know, even as they got older, I said, you know, there just ain't much good going on out there after midnight. Well, what you want to be out there at 1230 at night for? I'm thinking about myself. If I was out past 1230 at night, I usually was up to no good. Hmm? Stores are shut down. Most folks in bed. Y'all know what I'm talking about? And, you know, I say, and especially when they were younger, I said, y'all need to be home at 11. They act like a kill. Then they get a little older. What? Midnight. Next thing, 12. I said, no, you can forget the 12.30. I mean, you want to stay at 12.30, you might as well just come in when the sun comes up. But there's not a lot of good. People wait till it gets dark to break in your house. To break any car. How come? They want to be concealed. They want to be hid. And I'm not talking about skin color right now. You know, I can say, sir, oh, help me, help me, help me. But I'm, I'm so tired when I say something, uh, people of color, and I'm not picking on people of color, but they want to say I'm turning that. I, I'm talking about the sun shining and when the sun goes down. One's called daytime and one called nighttime. I'm not referring to skin color, but I'm here to tell you, Satan himself is known as darkness. He, there's nothing good in him. He's evil and he does everything. What He's more subtle than any beast of the field. Trickery, deception, and he tries to uh, hide everything that he does. He doesn't want you to see the whole picture. And a lot of nonsense goes on in darkness. Are y'all with me? God's the one that said, let there be light. How come? Because it's dark. Have you ever been out somewhere where there's no lights, no electricity, and say you're in a, trying to do something at night and you're like, a good flashlight would sure be handy. We were created and designed to function in light. Amen. God made you that way. God wants his people to walk in the light. 
Now I'm talking about spiritually. Now I'm talking about what what is what it well he said this this all just goes together because that's how the word is. Thy word. Huh? He said, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my path. So when you know, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Boy, you start putting all that together. Now we, we're getting somewhere. Now we went from uh, dumping that load of material and we got some things cut up and they're starting to get nailed together and we're seeing some shape take place. Ah, oh, now I see. Y'all, you know, but God saw way before. He said, let there be light. Just how his people were going to uh, function best. And it's when we walk in the light, when we walk hand in hand with Jesus Christ, we will be much better people. Amen. Can we read a verse? First John chapter one, verse seven. This this is helpful. This is helpful stuff. These are good tools to have. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, you can spend the rest of your life studying about that right there. Studying about Jesus Christ because he walked in the light and we want to mimic him. We have fellowship one with another because of this connection, because of this uh, covenant relationship, we have fellowship with him. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Huh? I'm just walking in the shower. We're walking in the fountain. What do you mean? We're, we're walking hand in hand with him. I'm, I'm walking the season of life. See, I'm studying him. I'm learning who he is, what he would do. What would Jesus do? Y'all remember that? What would Jesus do? That was good stuff. And then, and then we don't say, you know, what would so-and-so do? Well, we, we really... That's okay, but I got one better. What would Jesus do? How would Jesus do it? He said, the wise man built this house on this. Okay, so I'm trying to build my life. I'm trying to lay a foundation. We must include the teachings of Jesus Christ. Amen. And without that, yeah, you'll build something, but guess what? There's a storm coming. There, 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 there's a day coming when it's not going to be sunshiny and it's not going to be pleasant. It's going to be a bad day. Everybody has bad days. Everybody has things that takes place in their life. But here's the important part. If you do this correctly, when the bad day's over, you'll still be standing. You, you'll still, no weapon formed against you, you can prosper because you're standing on the solid rock foundation of Jesus Christ. He said, walk in the light. Now, I pretty much know when uh, I need my headlights. You, do y'all have to call somebody? Should I turn? Do you think I will turn my headlights on? If somebody was called me and said, I look outside. Seriously? People don't call me as that. You know? You know. And now it's different. I mean, cars, the cars know. I think people had to turn their headlights on now, they wouldn't know how. We used to have switches pulled out. We used to have dimmer switches on the floor. Click, click. Y'all remember that? Yep, I have one. That's the folks don't know nothing about that. That were it. I remember getting in some newer cars. Well, how you how you get the bright lights on? I had to call some, how you get these bright lights on? I was looking for something on the floor. But we know when we need to turn on the headlights. We know if well this thing's not functioning right. Here it is. These headlights should have already been on. What's going on with this thing? We know. And I'm here to tell you, when you give your life to Jesus Christ, you're going to know when you're walking in darkness. And it is still possible to do so. Saved people can make wrong decisions. Saved people can, can do something that's not scriptural. Saved people can find themselves on the wrong side of something because of a poor decision. But here's the truth. If we really get honest with ourselves and examine ourselves, we know if we're in darkness. And the good news is this. It's not a death sentence. It's, it's, it's not where you blew it. But it's about uh, get yourself out of that ditch. Get yourself back up on that straight and narrow. And begin to walk with Jesus Christ. And I promise you, church, we can walk with Him. Amen. 
we got to walk in the light. Because he's in the light. Amen. You know, growing up, you had somebody you looked up to, you wanted to be like him. That's, what, that's, that's there again for a young man. It, it matters what kind of men you put them around. Because they're going to pick one out. Amen. And you don't want to drop a young, uh, a young man off with people that lay up drunk all the time. And just, they're not productive. There are certain people that just are not productive for society. I know Jesus loves you and I know God wants to save you. But if, we, if everybody was like certain men in this world, y'all know what I'm talking about. Because it does say you know a tree by the fruit it bears. And I've said it before. They, they didn't build no penitentiary last year on my account. You don't need, you, you ain't got no place in there for me. Huh? But you're running over. They're full. There's one charge. Full of people. Can't find people to watch them. Staff short. What's that about? Making poor decisions will get you there. And then they put you in place and they lock you up and they take away your decision making. That will make them for you. You seem to have trouble making good decisions. We'll just make them for you. <coughs> if we would let God make decisions for us and begin to walk with Him, you'll discover that life and more abundantly. Can you say it me? Turn to Ephesians 5. Christians, you know, you don't, you don't unload this on the world. I don't roll into work tomorrow morning with some, with some folks that could care less about God and, and, and being a part of the body of Christ uh, and, and start saying, uh, you need to walk in the light after you get saved, see? Y'all know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. After we get saved, that's when we need instruction. We need to walk in the light. And we need to walk in love. Amen. God wants us to walk in love. First of all, love is a, it's a it's more than a cliche. It's more than a, I love you. True love is always giving. For God so loved the world that he gave. Huh? There's a bunch of folks that do some talking. I mean, they need, they need a little bit of their tongue clipped off. They talk so much. They just talk, 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 talk. But they don't do, do, do. There's a difference. Amen? God is a doer. And there's a verse of scripture that says, don't just be a hearer, be a doer. And, and, and we, if we're going to truly love, we're going to be giving. We're going to be doing. And you know when you truly love and you put yourself out there, that's when you open yourself up to be hurt. Because people say, well, I'm available. I'm, I, I've made a decision here. I'm going to love. Okay, then, you're going to give something. You're going to do something. You're going to invest in someone. And that someone, somewhere along the way, they may reject you. They may turn their back on you. And you know what? Have we not at times rejected God? Have we not at times rejected? I don't want you no more, Jesus. Huh? I think I'm just going to, I'm, I'm just going to go back. Well, you know how they said, we should have stayed back there in Egypt. At least we had onion soup. Huh? And you know, it's, it's really something how I would, and people do it all the time. I'm going to go back to my onion soup. What are you talking about? I'm going to go back to my bondage. I'm going I'm to go back to the life of misery. It's called backsliding. And, and with the way God has loved us and Jesus gave his life, is that not painful to him? I'm here to tell you. Y'all remember that song? Does he still feel the nails? Every time I fail, every time I sin, we cause pain to our Heavenly Father with our decisions. And I'm here to tell you, get ready for it. But when you truly love people, you open yourself up to be hurt. And there's many who say, ah, I tried that, and all it does is hurt me. That's part of it. 
You can't take it personal. Because you got to remember something. The enemy, the old devil, is working in these people. And he's trying to get at you. He's trying to discourage you. But if we don't take it so personal and we keep doing what we're called to do, I'm telling you right now, the church would be a much better place if we'd walk in love. Let's read that verse. Ephesians 5. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 2. And walk in love. You see that? So you can walk in hate. It's easy to tell, isn't it? It's like, can we see or is it dark? It's just about that obvious. It says, and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us. Here's our example. And hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smell and savor. Amen. You know, when something's good, it has a pleasantness to the nostrils. Can y'all say amen? I think, I think we, that's just put within us natural. But I can take a whip of some meat or some milk. Hmm, I'll pass on that. You know what I mean? You know. And I, what we're doing here is we know it's right to be as Jesus was. And it says he gave himself for us a sacrifice and that that was a sweet smelling savor in the nostrils of our Heavenly Father. And whenever we begin to love people biblically, it will be a sweet smelling savor when God looks at us. God loves everybody, don't get me wrong. But I'm here to tell you, it's just like, a, you know, if you got children, if you got multiple children, you love every one of your children. But there's one of them children that is a little more obedient than the others. There's one of those children that is just a little easier to get along with than the others. Amen. And, you know, not everybody is equal. It's just not a cookie cutter. And, and, and what people need, uh, you know, when you're correcting and disciplining children, not everybody's the same. When you, when you know, train up a child in the way they should go, it's up to the parent to know each individual kid and where they should be headed and how they should be bringing them up, always in the admonition of the Lord. But I'm just saying, not everybody's the same. But it's up to us, church to study, to learn, to develop. And we can be a sweet smelling savor to God the Father by walking in love. Amen. I do what I do because of how I feel about God. He can work with that. He can work with that. Some folks is hard to love. Some folks, it's a full-time job just to get along with. Wow. Really? Yeah. That's, you, you know somebody that falls in that category. And if you're going to spend a day with them, and you're going to get along with them, it will be work. Guess what? We're called to give. We're called to love. And the believer should be walking in love this morning. Can you say amen? amen. Y'all want to do another one? We got lots of walking habits that we should develop. One's walking in the Spirit. Hmm? Walking in the Spirit. If you, walk, if you get to walking in the wrong Spirit, it can really show. Worldly. It says, try the spirits to see if they're a God. There's different spirits. There, this sounds just like some fairy tale, but I'm, I'm preaching the truth this morning. There's good spirits. There's evil spirits. That's what this holiday is about today. It's about the evil side. Okay? It's real. I remember way back, I was a, a young preacher. And uh, I was in a General Baptist church. Nothing wrong with that church. You can be gloriously saved in them churches. And I, I preached about uh, demons. I about got through out of church. <laughs> but I was preaching the truth. I said, I was preaching the truth. There are evil 
spirits. There are fallen angels who made a decision for whatever reason way back. We're going to Satan. We're, 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 we're on Satan's side. And you know, somewhere along the way, it's come up with this, uh, a third of the angels fail. And you know, they say, well, glory be to God, we still got two thirds. That's like 66% and 33%, you know. It's good odds there, amen? But there are fallen angels, there are spirits that will not lead you in the right direction. They will trick you. And that's why, you know, uh, we, we don't call the psychic hotline. We don't try to communicate with the dead. We, we don't try to do things that, that, that just are not scriptural when it comes to spiritual conversation because there are familiar spirits that will mislead you and they will lie to you. Now, hey, I'm serious. This is serious stuff. But you'll be surprised, people. God bless everybody. I'm not trying to pick on anybody. But I love my wife very much. And, and, and if we were to go, one of us go by way of the grave and say, I'm still stuck here. I'm not going to be sitting out there at the graveyard in a lawn chair. How you doing, the old Eve? I sure miss you, baby. She's gone. And I know people do this and they're hurting, but they're confused. We're not supposed to do that. There is a separation now. They have entered into eternity. They're not here. Amen. And you get out there and you get to do that, and there'll be something to trick you, something to start communicating with you and get you acting crazy. And I know there's some good Christian folks. If I heard what I just said, they give you that. And they, they would just tune me out for the rest of their life. I'm trying to help you. And it's already in there. If you already had it in you, when you had that temptation, oh, God said don't do that. He said don't try to communicate with the dead. Yeah. And we're going to call a psychic call and pay $4 a minute. Huh? Yeah. I know some people. Is there a new woman? I can find here. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. We got to walk in the spirit. I'm talking about the right spirit. Let's read Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. This I say then, walk in the Spirit. Why would I want to do that? And you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So we have a problem, all of us in this room, and all of humanity. It's called lust of the flesh. It's the reason in the beginning that Eve failed and the man right along with her. And we say lust of the flesh and everybody's like, well, I don't have no uh, sexual problem. It's better than that. It's called sin. Lust of the flesh. And, and if you study that out, there's like three categories that you can lump all sin into. And you know, it's, it, it talks about how it appealed to her eye and uh, then, then it's about, well, this will make you smart. This will make you be like God, you know. You, you can have your own business. Nothing wrong with self-employment, but I'm telling you, sometimes the reason people are motivated to do certain things is not the right reason, not the right motive. Amen. I think the enemy at one time wanted to have his own thing. I'll just be, I'll be God. I'll have my own little thing over here. Well, not everybody is going to have their own little thing. Uh, a lot of people in society uh, need to answer to somebody. Some folks, when they get self-employed, can't get themselves out of bed and go to work. That's just food for thought. But we're talking about walking in the Spirit. And he said, if you walk in the Spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. In other words, if we will walk in the Spirit, we won't find ourselves in sin. You know, we have a hard time, I, most people, some of them some say, I'm a multitasker. Well, hallelujah. But I really have a hard time thinking about two things at the same time. I have a hard time doing two things. And, and then I guess that's what multitasking means, isn't it? You know, if they say, hey, uh, you know, we're going we're gonna to build this building. And usually what we do, you, you build along the walls you can pick up. And a lot of times it's 16 football, uh, especially if it's two to six and it's got tall ceilings. But it's really hard for me. I, I lay out one wall time, you know. 
get your plates cut, make sure they're the same length. That's where a lot of people mess up. I'm getting sidetracked, I'm trying to help you. If you want to build something and you want to get a plump later, make sure you top and bottom plates the same length. And, and if they're a sixteenth off, and you do that three times on this long wall, it's going to get you. You're going to plumb this end, and this end won't be plumb. That was free. I'm just trying to help you. That's why a lot of things don't go right. Well, we did it. No, you didn't do it. You done it wrong. And, and if we will do things God's way, and if we will walk in the Spirit, and it's going to be impossible for you if you're walking with God and you're meditating on the Word of God to get off over here and get somewhere where God does not want you to be. Are you with me? It's called walking in the Spirit. How's it start? You hear the good news of the gospel that Jesus died on the cross and he paid the price for you. He paid the debt that you owed that you could never pay. Well, just give me time. I'll work that out. You cannot work this out. You cannot pay this. He paid it for you. And then you trust his sacrifice. And when you do that and you begin to live for him and you ask him to save you, you ask him to forgive you, you believe that to be true. I believe there's a lot of Christians that really still don't feel like they're forgiven. You need to believe you are forgiven. You need to believe that he died for you. Amen. It's going to be, it's going to be hard to get saved when you've got trouble believing that he forgave you. Amen. you got to trust what he did. And then you walk in the Spirit. You don't walk in yourself. Oh, well, you know, I've had a good week. Uh, I'm feeling good about making heaven. I only said one cuss word. And I, I, I read a chapter, you know, out of the Bible every day, and I, I've been spending 15 minutes in prayer, and I'm feeling pretty good about making heaven. That's not walking in the Spirit. That's walking in the flesh. And that's where a lot of people mess up. But when you trust Jesus Christ and you begin to walk with Him, I'm here to tell you, he, he will put strength within you. He will put anointing within you. And sin will not, no longer have dominion over you. That's how people get free. Can you say amen? If you walk in the Spirit, it, it, you know, this morning, if we would just start walking in the light, you know, just say every time you take a step, you're moving forward. Is that light or dark? As you go, Boy, that gets back to that, that 